Welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're plunging into uh, a really electrifying topic. It's a groundbreaking achievement in quantum computing that could fundamentally change, well, everything about future tech. Our mission for this deep dive is to explore Oxford's quantum leap, near perfect quibit control. Hmm. We've got the sources right here and we're gonna pull out the key nuggets to understand what this uh, record-breaking precision really means. And just to kick things off, here's something that might uh, blow your mind a bit. Oxford scientists, they've hit an error rate so, so low. You are literally more likely to get struck by lightning this year than for one of their quantum gates to mess up. Just think about that for a second. Yeah, it's hard to overstate how vital that kind of precision is. It's absolutely critical for quantum computing. You know, without incredibly low error rates, these complex calculations, the stuff quantum computers are supposed to do, they just, well, they fall apart. The result is meaningless noise. So this breakthrough, it provides this um, almost unimagined foundation for building truly powerful, reliable quantum machines. Okay, okay, that sets the stage incredibly well. So let's really dig into the specifics here. What exactly did the Oxford physicists do? What's the core achievement? Right, so they've set a new world record for quibit control. We're talking an error rate of just 0.000000015%. It's hmm. astonishing put that in perspective, um, that means only one mistake in about 6.7 million operations. It's just an unprecedented level of accuracy for a single quibit. One in 6.7 million. Wow. And what's really remarkable, like you said, is the scale of improvement, isn't it? That's nearly 10 times better than the previous record. Exactly. Which uh, the same Oxford team set back in 2014. That was one in one million, which was already amazing. Then. It was, yes. It really shows that continuous, dedicated progress. So that lightning strike comparison, it's not just catchy, it's actually, well, numerically accurate in this context. Absolutely. And what's fascinating is what this low error rate really signifies in the quantum world. Professor David Lucas, one of the co-authors, he stated it directly. This is the most accurate qubit operation ever recorded anywhere in the world. So this isn't just tweaking things, it's a huge leap forward. It really pushes the boundaries of what we even thought was experimentally possible for these fundamental building blocks. Phenomenal. But okay, the next question that pops into my head, and probably for a lot of you listening, is how? Right. How did they manage to pull this off? What was the key uh, innovation? Well, their approach centers on using a trapped calcium ion as the quibit. These ions, they're kind of a natural choice. They have um, a long lifetime. They're quite robust for storing quantum information. So they make really excellent candidates for stable quibits. Right, calcium ions. But here's where it gets really interesting, right? Yeah. The core innovation. The Oxford team controlled the quantum state using electronic signals. Microwaves, specifically. Exactly, microwaves. And that's a big shift from the usual way, which relies heavily on lasers. It is a fundamental shift, and it offers some really significant benefits over lasers. For one, you get greater stability, which is key. But beyond that, um, electronic control is just much cheaper and more robust than fiddly laser systems. Plus, and this is a big deal for scaling up, it's much easier to integrate into those ion trapping chips. You know, the little it's, microchips designed to hold the ions. And something else that's really crucial for, like, practical application. They did this experiment at room temperature and without needing magnetic shielding. Room temperature, wow. Yeah, that dramatically simplifies the technical requirements. It makes building a working quantum computer potentially far less complex, far more accessible than many other approaches. That's, that's huge. Yeah. And it really is a testament to the researchers involved. We should probably mention them. From the University of Oxford's Department of Physics Clarendon Laboratory, Molly Smith, a co-lead author and graduate student, oh. along with Aaron Liu, Dr. Mario Jelly, and Professor David Lucas, the co-author we mentioned. And also Dr. Koichiro Miyanishi, a visiting researcher from the University of Osaka. A real team effort. So this level of precision is just astounding. But I'm wondering, beyond just needing fewer error-correcting qubits, what does this precision fundamentally change about the kind of problems quantum computers might tackle? Does this sort of shift the whole roadmap, or is it more about accelerating the existing goals? That's a great question, because it really is more than just a numbers game. You're right. For a quantum computer to do anything useful, anything complex, you're going to need to run millions, maybe billions of operations across lots and lots of qubits. And if your fundamental error rate is too high, the final answer just gets lost in the noise. It's useless. Now, error correction can fix mistakes, 
but it demands a huge overhead. You need many, many more physical qubits just to protect the information of one logical qubit that's doing the calculation. So by slashing this inherent error rate for the basic single qubit operations, this new method directly cuts down the number of extra qubits you need for that error correction. Molly Smith, one of the lead authors, she put it perfectly. She said it significantly reduces the infrastructure required for error correction opening the way for future quantum computers to be smaller, faster, and more efficient. Smaller, faster, more efficient. Yeah. That's the dream. Exactly. This isn't just a small step. It's a foundational shift. It lets us start thinking seriously about designing quantum algorithms for problems, say, in chemistry or material science, mm -hmm. that were just theoretical pipe dreams before because the error budget was simply too tight. It wasn't practical. That makes perfect sense. Fewer errors going in means less complex fixing needed later on. And like you touched on, it's not just about building these big calculation machines, is it? This kind of precise control. It must be useful elsewhere in quantum tech. Oh, absolutely. Think about ultra-precise clocks or advanced quantum sensors. This foundational ability to control a quantum system so well, it ripples out. It benefits the whole field. And it's, you know, worth remembering the Oxford group has deep expertise here. This work didn't come out of nowhere. It led to the spin-out company Oxford Ionics back in 2019. Oh, okay. And they're now a recognized leader in these trapped ion platforms. They've been building on this foundation for years. Okay, so the microwave method sounds incredibly promising, especially for stability and integration. But are there any um, potential trade-offs compared to using lasers? Maybe speed of operations, or is the initial setup still complex, even if it's cheaper long-term? That's a, a fair point to consider. Historically, yes, some laser-based operations could be faster for certain specific gate types, but the advantages microwaves offer, the stability, the cost reduction, the scalability, especially integration with chips, those are proving to be really significant factors for building practical large-scale systems. It's always about finding that right balance for the overall system performance, you know, and this Oxford work really demonstrates that microwaves are a very, very strong contender in that equation. Got it. So while this is a fantastic world record, a major milestone for these single qubit operations, we do need to acknowledge it's just one piece of a much larger puzzle, right? It sounds almost too good to be true sometimes. What are the um, the buts or the next big hurdles? Well, connecting this to the bigger picture, yes. A functional quantum computer needs more than just good single qubit gates. It needs two qubit gates as well, gates that allow qubits to interact to become entangled. That's where the real quantum magic happens for computation. Right, the interaction part. Exactly. And the current limitation, the big challenge now, is that those two qubit gates still have much higher error rates. We're talking maybe one error in 2,000 operations, in the very best demonstration so far, compared to one in 6.7 million for this single qubit work. That's a huge difference. It is. Hmm. So while the single qubit precision is phenomenal, absolutely groundbreaking, reducing those two qubit error rates, that's going to be absolutely crucial for building truly fault-tolerant quantum machines. You know, computers that are robust enough to run complex algorithms reliably, even with some underlying errors. So still fascinating frontiers ahead. Lots more work to do on those interactions. And it's also worth just mentioning, this Oxford team, they're not working in a vacuum, are they? They're part of the UK Quantum Computing Assimilation Hub, the QCS Hub. That's right. Which itself is part of the bigger UK National Quantum Technologies Program. So it highlights that collaborative nature of cutting-edge research. Mm. If this precision keeps improving, do we eventually get to a point where we're worrying more about, I don't know, cosmic rays hitting the computer than the gates themselves making errors? Well, cosmic rays are always a fun factor in ultra-sensitive physics experiments. But yes, on a serious note, achieving this kind of precision fundamentally shifts the landscape. It pushes us towards levels of reliability where those more exotic environmental factors could become the next limiting thing rather than the basic gate fidelity itself. It really changes the focus. So to bring it all back home, Oxford's achievement really is a monumental leap, mm. especially for single qubit precision. It makes that future of powerful, practical quantum computers feel much closer, much more tangible. Absolutely. And maybe a final thought for you to mull over. Consider how this whole process works, this iterative scientific discovery. You know, building on past successes, identifying a specific bottleneck like single qubit errors, tackling it head on. That's how we end up with these transformative technologies that honestly seemed like pure science fiction not that long ago. So the question becomes, what new problems, what new possibilities might these increasingly precise quantum computers help you solve in the future? What doors does this open up? 